Hello, good afternoon everyone. Kamusta po kamo? Kamusta po ang mga principals at mga guidance counselors? Okay naman po ma. Sige mo, tingnan ko nga po kayo. Please open your cam. Okay pa? Okay, so magmeryenda na lang po kamo diyan ha sa inyo. <laughs> Okay, so first of all, I would like to thank uh, the superintendency headed by Sir uh, Sir Despi, and of course the CID chief, ha, nandyan po, and then the SGOD chief. Siguro meron din dyan po na representative from the youth formation program, officer po. Thank you very much for your attendance. And of course, sa lahat ng principals, elementary and secondary. So, we are hoping that all of the talks will be internalized for us to have a uniform implementation of this homeroom guidance program. So, you see, me and Ma'am Tess, I would like to commend also Ma'am Tess and the principal of Ma'am Tess kasi hiniram ko siya muna to be my partner for this orientation. So, really, sabi ni Sir Despi kanina, dapat may may dialogue of the hearts kaya kami po ay hindi nag nag-record <laughs> ng talk kaya talagang merong personal touch so for 13 divisions we are doing this okay so may mga schedule kami kaya medyo sakripisyado din pero very important because kailangan palaging high spirited tayo sabi ni Ma'am Sheila Taguda kanina ano po okay so I hope that every you are all fine and kung meron man not okay it's okay not to be okay sometimes di ba ba okay so si mom Tessyata will will present for me I will be sharing to you what mom Jona Christine uh, presented during our national orientation kaya kaya po ito ang pinapagamit sa atin so that we can be they can be assured they will be assured that uniform po ang ating implementation of the homeroom guidance for this school year 26 and 2021 so to you uh, parts 4 to 8 of the policy okay so some are no longer new to you pero we have to uh, be reoriented of this kasi meron din dito po ang mga re revision sa toko sige po ma'am pwede po slide show paki slide show po ma'am para malaki ang mga ang text Okay. Okay lang ba yan sa inyo? Oh, sige. Okay. Sige. Thank you, Ma'am Tess. Uh, kanina, what, as what Ma'am um, Tess also, Basilia mentioned, that you are so lucky, SDO Iriga City, because you have at least five or seven Registered guidance counselors, ba? Okay, that will be helping you in the implementation of the homeroom guidance program. At uh, marami, basta, parang mas marami kayo sa iba because some other divisions, kahit isa po ay wala. Mahirap po magkaroon ng guidance counselors, nahirapan po ang ibang division. But Iriga City has, ilan pa parang five or six kayo dyan na na registered guidance counselors. Okay po, Ma'am Tess. So I'll be discussing to you the procedure that is the part 4 of the policy. Sabi po dito sa part 4, implementation of the program shall be governed and guided by the following principles and policies. Okay, for one, we have the nomenclature. Sinasabi po that homeroom guidance shall be reflected in the class program of every school and other school documents such as form 9 or the report card and the form 10 
the permanent student record as homeroom guidance. However, its details, the learner's assessment tool, shall be attached to SF9 and SF10 whenever being issued to requesting parties. So again, this is our second, second year of implementation. So we are hoping that the, the principals are also aware of this app. But meron pong kalituhan nito last year kasi hindi gaano nakabanggit dito at kung hindi rin gaano nabasa yung guidelines last year or your policy, uh, nalito ang mga schools kung paano i reflect ang homeroom guidance. So maliwanag po now in this policy na SF Form 9 at saka sa permanent student record mag appear isusulat po doon ang homeroom guidance. However, doon po sa learner's assessment tool in Annex 5 of this policy, ibibigay at ilalagay po ito, i-attach sa, sa card or sa Form 137 whenever being issued to requesting party. Pag mayroon lang po, magre-request. I-attach po ito. Okay po? So, kasi during our national orientation, it was made, uh, Ma'am Jona made mention of the, that there are many, many, as in many, in, not only in Region 5, uh, uh, many schools were not able to do this in the first year of implementation. So we are hoping this time that uniform tayo. Ano po? Okay, so for number two, homeroom guidance shall not be viewed as a formal learning area like education sa pagpapakatao and the like. It shall be treated as a program that will help learners develop the competences needed in the three domains. Hence, its delivery in class is quite informal but still follows the structured learning experience flow. Kanina nabanggit many times ni Ma'am Tess na this is not to be viewed as a formal learning area but it is also to follow the structured learning experience. And actually, binigay ito sa class advisor as one binigyan siya ng one teaching load. Kaya meron pa rin modules na ginagamit. Okay, so this is not academics and this is not to be treated as academics but this is to focus on the personal and social development of the child more on the personal and social development. Meron din siyang academic at career development content pero ang pinaka-focus kung nakita ninyo kanina, malaki ang percentage of the competencies along personal and social development. And number three, class advisors shall be assigned to implement the program with the technical assistance of the guidance counselor. If the school does not have a guidance counselor, the school head may assign a guidance designate but he or she should be provided with proper training specific to the implementation of homeroom guidance. So, sino po ang mag-designate? The school head will designate kung walang guidance counselor na available sa school. So, sino po itong mga i-designate? Of course, yung kanilang mga teachers, permanent teachers, so is designated as guidance Counselor, T tutulong po siya, will, will give technical assistance to the class advisor, pero principal should make sure that the designated guidance counselor is properly trained on the specific implementation of the homeroom guidance. On teaching load, teaching homeroom guidance shall be equivalent to one teaching load on top of the teacher's advisory and subjects load. Okay, so kailangan din bawasan ang load ng teacher advisor to give also a uh, way to the homeroom guidance program even if it is one week lang. Pero it is in the policy that it is one teaching load, equivalent to one teaching load. So sana naman po dahil meron naman, sana na, nalaman po namin na meron mga teachers na kaunti lang po ang load. Pero maraming mga advisors ang napakaraming load. 
So sana po yung mga advisors, mga advisors ano, para makadagdag sa kanila itong teaching uh, the homeroom guidance. Okay. So class program. The homeroom guidance shall be scheduled once a week. And number six, so if it is once a week, it should be only 60 minutes a week from grades 1 to 12. Okay, so in kindergarten, it is included in the blocks of time in kindergarten. But in grades 1 to 12, it is 60 minutes or once a week. Okay, so on learning modality, the homework shall be delivered. Depending on the needs of the learner and the school's capability. Kung ano po ang modality na ginagamit ng school, yun din po ang gagamitin sa homeroom guidance. On learning materials, the homeroom guidance will be issued by the Department of Education through the Bureau of Learning Resources. This will be posted in the DepEd Learning Resource Portal. Actually, nagka-problema tayo nito last year on the first implementation dahil hindi lahat ng modules ay na, na release Okay, so, but there are mga mabilis na, na mga guidance counselors na were able to, to, the, uh, to download this sa portal, sa DepEd portal, na iba pang mga modules. But this year po, kompleto na po ito na mga modules from quarters 1 to 4. Okay? Number 9. Sisipin mo nga ito lang, ma'am. Hindi ka na maya ng ligay. Please unmute po ba na, ma'am Tess? Ay, sino pa anak ka? Okay. So, Along medium of instruction, the self-learning modules are written in English, but the regions may opt to translate the learning material in their mother tongue or any language convenient to the learners to ensure participation and interaction during the session and better understanding of the concept. So since we are in the in distance learning po ngayon, uh, Ewan ko, if kayo po ay nag-localize or nag, yes, contextualize ng module sa, ng homeroom guidance in mother tongue. But it is stated in the policy that we could uh, translate the learning materials in mother tongue. Alam nyo po, especially pag meron na pong face-to-face, -face, mas maganda po na naiintindihan mabuti ng mga learners pag ito po ay nasa mother tongue. Maganda at nafe-feel talaga nila ang mga lessons and activities pag it is given ni mother tongue. Because very important ang, ang personal and social na nakaka-relate talaga sila if it is being taught in, in mother tongue. Di po ba? So okay, so you have the leeway po SDO uh, Iriga to translate this one modules in mother tongue. Okay, for number 10, collaboration with the family and community is also encouraged in order to create a venue for the learners in developing such life skills. Parents may refer to the gabay sa, form, sa magulang found in the SLM in order to guide their children in accomplishing the activities. My dear school heads and guidance counselors and guidance designate, during your PTA meeting, Please emphasize this, the gabay sa magulang found in the SLM, which Mom Tess presented kanina sa kanyang last slide, that they have to understand, they have to, because the, the gabay will teach them how to, to teach their children in accomplishing the activities. Hindi po ito gabay sa magulang kung paano nila sasagutan ang activities ng mga bata, kundi kung paano nila i-guide ang mga bata. Okay? So, 11. Orientation and capacity building. The central office through the Bureau of Curriculum Development shall conduct orientation and capacity building to region and division supervisors in charge of guidance and counseling. Okay, so first week of September, we attended, attended me and Mom Tess attended the 
uh, the national orientation. And now we are having this. Sabi ko nga, it should be if uh, a regional orientation but at the same time division. Kasi sabi ko nga, binagbigay. I really made it a point na I have to make time with you. Kaya lang sinabay ko si Ma'am Tess. But thank you very much, Ma'am Tess. Very willing also that to, to, to make this uh, very uh, exclusive orientation for every division so that nga maging uniform ang ating implementation. Okay? So thank you also for being with us, 89 participants. <laughs> okay? For number 12. Ayan. So, nandyan po yung schedule pero so that school heads, kayo na po ang bahala mag-schedule sa school ninyo with stakeholders. Okay? Thank you. Next. Along learners' development assessment tool, homeroom guidance assessment results shall be distributed and discussed by the class advisor during the PTA conference. This shall be issued as an attachment to the learner's report card. Ulitin ko po, homeroom guidance assessment results shall be distributed and discussed by the class advisor during the parent-teacher conference. He meaning, every release of the card, every quarter, there should be a, uh, a conference and parents dapat malaman nila kung ano ang estado ng kanilang mga anak sa, kani sa homeroom guidance program. Remember that dialogue is very important, communication is very important. Kaya uh, sa presented kanina ni Ma'am Tess about the different uh, cases and problems faced by the teenagers today and the young ones, kailangan natin magkaroon ng conference at malaman nila ang status ng kanilang mga anak regarding the homeroom guidance uh, accomplishments. Okay. For number 13, we have deputy school shall include all expenses relative to homeroom guidance in their annual implementation plan and school improvement plan. So very important, though this is not uh, included in the formal or the yeah formal learning areas, but this is part of the basic education curriculum. Kaya very important also that uh, this will, should be funded. Programs of homeroom guidance should be funded in schools. Kaya po, kung wala po, hindi nyo na ilagay, but we are, we are, we are hoping na nakalagay po ito sa inyong mga AIP and school improvement plan because this is our second year of implementation and we would not like po to hear reports like my mga teachers kasi na I have plans salimbawa my guide my counselor guidance counselor designate or guidance uh, registered guidance counselor na meron silang mga plan naman sa school pero the school head would always say wala po tayong fund dyan okay so please give also uh please look into this also po, ano, na mabigyan ng, ng fund also. Kasi marami po, remember that the instruction is only 15% of the whole, of the total uh, uh, services and program of the homeroom, of, of guidance and counseling. Okay po? So, ang, ang, F, ang youth formation programs or youth formation program officers, marami po silang programs and activities sa regarding uh, the implementation of the homeroom guidance. Okay? So, and then kayo din po mga guidance counselors, kung meron kayong plan of na, 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 na kailangan ng fund, you have to, to tell the school head so that mailagay at ma-include sa kanilang implementation plan. And number 14, non-implementation or improper implementation of homeroom guidance shall be subject to existing applicable administrative action. So, imposible naman po hindi natin ito i-implement. Kaya, but we are very thankful also because nung hiningayang ko si Ma'am Sally ng, ng report, hi Ma'am Sally pala, Serilio, uh, last year, meron naman po report na isinubmit. At I know that very active ang inyong mga guidance counselors. We have Ma'am Narisa, Ma'am Tess, that they are very visible 
helping not only your learners in Iriga, but the learners throughout the Philippines, not only the Bicolano, but also because meron silang mga programs, my YouTube channel po, Sinda. Okay, so let's go to the roles and responsibility of the and officers, offices. Okay, your role in school is school head, the school head. What are your responsibilities? A school head supervises and monitors the implementation of homeroom guidance and ensures that proper inter intervention for each learner will be provided. Specifically, the school head shall ensure the following. A. Planning for the annual homeroom guidance implementation and monitoring. Planning for the annual homeroom guidance implementation and monitoring. So, <clears throat> since meron tayong ngayon medyo late na itong orientation natin, but we are hoping that during the, uh, before the opening of classes, nagkaroon na po kayo ng, ng, ng annual planning and monitoring of this program. B, preparing of timelines, calendar of activities, monitoring plan for the entire duration of the program, and inclusion of homeroom guidance in school forms, SF9 and SF10. Okay, so C, allocating budget for homeroom guidance that is included in the school improvement plan and annual plan. Okay, adhering to the stipulated loading of teachers and class programming for SY 2021-2022. Meaning, pag may pumunta po sa inyo si Ma'am Sally or sino po ang in charge niyo, CID chief, SGOD chief, or the ASDS, SDS, at hinana po sa inyo. At pag may nag-monitor po sa atin from central office, see to it that you have the the loading of teachers and class uh, and in the inclusion of the homeroom program, homeroom guidance program in your class program for for this school year. And letter E, providing the necessary equipment, computer, okay, printer, photocopier, risograph, and supplies, printing materials, office supplies etc so like the the formal learning areas the core learning areas kailangan din bigyan din ito ng attention na homeroom guidance if if kailangan nila computer printer photocopier ibig sabihin meron silang ipiprint at meron gagamitin na mga materials so the school also the school head should provide this for them F, strengthening partnership with stakeholders. Kasali po siya sa, sa pagtatap ninyo ng mga uh, education partners and stakeholders. Kagaya ng sinabi ni Ma'am Tess kanina, if you, kailangan ninyo yung mga psychometrician, psychiatrist, at saka iba pang referral, uh, you can tap uh, partners and stakeholders on that matter. And letter G, orienting the teachers, parents, learners, and other stakeholders about the program. So, hindi pwedeng pag dinanong mo ang parents na ano ba ang, alam mo ba ang homeroom guidance program? Baka sabihin hindi namin yan alam. Baka may teachers naman na sasabihin nila, wala naman kaming orientation na ganap sa school about that. And that happened. Last year, na mga natanong namin, binigay lang sa amin ang presentation at wala naman kaming uh, nangyaring orientation. Kaya hindi namin masyado naintindihan on how to implement the program. Sana hindi naman po ito ang yari. Ano? So, and then, creating mechanism that would ensure efficient distribution and retrieval of homeroom guidance module and outputs. And uh, very much aware nito ang mga class advisors. And I know that this is, uh, you are pra practicing this. Uh, preparing and conducting of homeroom guidance class observation. School principals, uh, principals, you are going to monitor or observe the conduct of homeroom guidance. So that is in our next one that will be explained later. And submitting the homeroom guidance is school implementation report. So kailangan po meron kayong report. Hindi pwede barabara lang. Hindi pwede, okay na ito, 
di pwede. Di ba mahirap gumawa ng report pag hindi tayo nag implement Because I I, I have been uh, up, pala also, I was once a school head also. 11 years ako principal in Albay Division. Ang hirap po gumawa ng report pag hindi po tayo nag implement Kaya ang dali gumawa ng report, palagi kang high in spirit pag meron kang mga ginagawa at documented ang iyong mga ginagawa. And next, number two. So, that's for, for the school heads or the principals. This time, for guidance counselor or guidance designate. Noong una, nalilito may mga questions sa central office. Ano ba, paano ba tatawagin ang hindi registered guidance counselor? Ang tawag po ngayon ay guidance designate. Kasi nang una, ano ba talaga coordinator or designate? So this time, in this policy, mapapansin po natin uh, na consistent po ang paggamit ng guidance designate. Okay, ano naman ang responsibilities ninyo? Serves as the program manager and ensures the correct content and pedagogy of form room guidance in school. Specifically, the guidance counselor or the guidance designate shall ensure the following. One, A, assist the school head in the planning for the annual homeroom guidance implementation and monitoring. Alam nyo maganda na talagang nagko-collaborate at may dialogue ang homeroom, uh, ang, ang principal at saka yung guidance counselor or designate. Kasi may mga report po na sometimes may gustong programa tapos ayaw ng school head. Sometimes kasi hindi rin nag-follow ng protocol nanguna kumbaga nanginuta na ngaya kaya minsan nadadagit pa ang school head so it's very important na you have to uh, to have to follow protocol so school head alam din niya ang mga plans ng homeroom guidance or the guidance counselor okay and uh, kung meron din mga plans ang homeroom ang ang counselor guidance counselor or the designate kailangan din naman i-acknowledge i appreciate ng mga principals kasi baka may 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 report din kasi ang mga guidance designate na parang not priority hindi sila napapansin Par parang it's always a no but sana hindi naman po, ano, uh, kasi nakikita naman namin how passionate your guidance counselors are in your SDO. Okay, so letter C, conduct the orientation of teachers, parents, learners, and other stakeholders. Magka, ano po kayo nito, ng, ng principal. And coordinate with the class advisors on the implementation of homeroom guidance. So from time to time, kayo pong mga guidance counselor or date, uh, mag-coordinate with the class advisor to follow up, magkumustahan about the implementation or the status of the homeroom guidance. And wag na pong mahiya, pero uh, alam mo naman, uh, wag na pong mahiya ang uh, mga guidance counselor kasi sometimes nahihiya daw sila sa class advisor or sa, sa principal. Maliwanag naman na sinasabi dito that you are partners. Kaya lang, uh, kailangan lang natin talagang respect and courtesy ano po so letter e provide technical assistance to class advisors and other guidance services or interventions to learner without violating the provisions stipulated in ra 9258 the guidance and counseling act of 2004 okay so pag merong mga kailangan ang advisor sa na, na case sa mga learners do not please do not hesitate to ask the uh, to 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 and uh, to seek the assistance of uh, the ser guidance counselor through availing the different services and interventions yes and pareho po yan again okay the class advisor naman this time serves as the homeroom guidance implementer in the class. Specifically, the class advisor shall ensure the following. A. Distribution, facilitation, and retrieval of homeroom guidance, SLMs, and outputs in different learning modalities. And uh, okay naman ito kasi nakikita naman eh. Palaging uh, 
ginagawa naman po ito. Letter B, evaluation and discussion of learners development assessment results to the learners and parents quarterly. So, class advisor during every after the the waiting period, kailangan po dinidiscuss ito ang development ng bata sa program na ito pinapaalam sa bata at saka sa mga magulang. So, paano po ito mangyayari? Because wala naman tayong face-to-face. -face. I know na meron kayong mga programs like may group chat kayo, meron kayong home visitation, uh, meron kayong uh, group chat with the parents and with the learners. So, kailangan po iparating ito on their status about the their status on the homeroom guidance program. And then letter C, accomplishment of SS, uh, SF9 and SF10 in accordance to the learner's development assessment results. Okay? And refer to learner to the, of learner to the guidance counselor only if counseling intervention or other guidance services are needed. So, hindi naman all the time kailangan rin refer sa guidance counselor ang problema ng bata. If you could have it, could guide the child or the learner or could, could solve the problem within your level, within kayo lang at saka yung parent, okay naman. But if there is a need na il, i, ang kailangan na talaga ay guidance counselor, please do not hesitate to refer to your guidance counselor. So kung wala naman po sa school ninyo ng registered guidance counselor, but you have in your division uh, mga guidance counselors po. And guidance counselors in other schools. Kasi basta nandoon dito sa division ninyo. At saka itong mga guidance counselors are just waiting for such reports na mga mga ganon. Kasi yun talaga ang kanilang forte. Okay? Para maiwasan itong mga depression and other other problems ng mga bata. Matulungan agad. Okay po? So you could ask also the status of the children or, or of the learner sa mga parents. Kung nagdadalawang isip kayo. And, and kung gusto ninyo makasigurado about the, the, the status of the learner. And letter A, collaboration with co-teachers and parents in developing the competencies of the learners at home. I know that you are doing that. Na kaya nga nag enjoy kayo even um, nasa remote learning tayo pero nag enjoy kayo ng pagtuturo at pag-attend to the needs of our learners. And... Okay, let us go to the roles and responsibility naman of the school's division office. The CID through the ESP supervisor, so through sa inyo, Mama Ma'am Sally, si Ma'am Sally Cerillo. And the SGOD through also your, your designated guidance and counseling focal person, serve as the division program manager of the homeroom guidance and coordinates with the guidance counselor or guidance designate of schools. By the way, ito po ay, kung, kung officially, I would like to congratulate you as the Iriga if meron po kayong official designation of a certain uh, registered guidance counselor na uh, in your own initiative, even without memorandum from the central office. Kasi importante po na meron talagang designated na guidance counselor. But we are waiting also, kami po ako rin, ang, ano dito, I'm waiting also for the memorandum from the central office, which we brought this out during the, the meeting sa central office at the orientation na we really need to have uh, supporting document so that we could we could hire or we could designate uh, permanent guidance counselor or uh, focal per counseling focal person in the division. Okay, specifically, schools division program manager shall ensure the following. Uh, sa CID po, it's the ESP supervisor. Ano ang kanyang responsibility? One, localize and indigenize the content and pedagogy. Or, translation of SLMs to mother tongue, creation of instructional videos, radio-based instruction, and other blended learning materials. And I know that marami kayo niyan. Sabi ko nga sa inyo, you are uh, mamtes and 
uh, Bena and Ma'am Narisa, meron silang mga ginagawa na mga video lessons. Ano? Actually, I was asked by Ma'am Jonah sa central office kasi nakita nila yun. Sa, sabi sa akin, if nag-LR daw, na kung na, na validate daw ng LR ang inyong mga presentation, but according to LR, okay naman daw po yon Okay? Sabi ng BLR, okay na po yon na mga ginagawa ninyo because depende po sa modality na ginagamit ng SDO. So congratulations for, for that mga initiatives po. And let number two, conduct orientation to the school program managers, the school head, guidance counselors, uh, class advisors on homeroom guidance curriculum and guidelines. Three, conduct monitoring of homeroom guidance, checking of school's class program, teachers loading, school's monitoring plan, and school's implementation observation. So my dear principals, wag po kayo magtaka if your ESP supervisor would ask you to have a copy or to show her the, the class program and your loading of teacher na nandoon po yung homeroom guidance. And four, consolidate and submit the annual division accomplishment report on homeroom guidance implementation. It should be a consolidated report po. Ano? Sa, kaya kung may mga district ma Uh, sa mga dis i-concern na po ang report from other is from all the schools bago ninyo i-submit kay Ma'am Sally. Okay? Uh, next. Uh, the SGOD naman uh, ang, ang ang registered guidance counselor naman kasi and the desig or the designate under the SGOD or dito sa amin sa ESSD. Okay, so ano naman ang kanyang responsibility? Provide technical assistance in the school in the conduct of homeroom guidance program. Technical assistance, ano? And conduct capability building to school guidance counselors or designates and class advisors in coordination with division ESP supervisors. Okay, maliwanag naman po yan. Again, palaging coordinate with the ESP supervisor. Next po. So, ito naman sa amin naman ito is the regional office. Why do we need to have reports from you? Because also the regional office is needing that for a report also to be submitted sa central office. So, pag sinabi po sa CLMD, sa amin po yon. So, so dahil binigay po ito na homeroom guidance program under ESP, so ako rin po ang focal person sa region di, di, sa homeroom guidance program. So, through this time, si Ma'am Tess po ay ginagamit ko muna as a, the representative of ESSD. Okay? So, Ano naman po ang aking role? So, conduct orientation of division program managers. Ito po, iginagawa natin ngayon. Then, monitor and conduct of homeroom guidance. And, consolidate and submit the regional accomplishment report on homeroom guidance implementation. The way when you submit report on homeroom guidance uh, program implementation, paki not only the forms, dagdagan, lagyan po ninyo ng mga pictures if you have documentation, pictures or videos about that. Ano? Kasi maganda po na meron tayong isusub na mga uh, uh, evidences of what is happening of, on how you implemented the program. And wag po magsusubmit sa akin sa email ko ng direct, ng galing sa school. Sabi nga, it should always be a consolidated report. So, from the uh, district, or schools to Ma'am Sally and si Ma'am Sally magko-consolidate naman yan with the assistance of the guidance counselor and isusubmit sa akin consolidated report po. And uh, the ESSD naman like si Ma'am Tess ngayon provide technical assistance in the conduct of homeroom guidance which we are doing now and conduct capability building to the program managers in coordination with the regional apps. Ito na po ang ginagawa namin ngayon. We started this for school year 2021-2022. Sige po. So, central office naman po ay collaboration ang tatlong bureaus. 
Ito po, the, the BCD or the Bureau of Curriculum Development serves as the program manager in the central office. So the focal person ensures the correct curriculum articulation and today's annual report on the conduct of the homeroom guidance. Yung focal person po sa BCD, yung pong sinasabi at binanggit at nakita ninyo kanina si Sir Mark Bercando sa video na presented uh, before we formally started the program or uh, the orientation. And sa BLD naman or the Bureau of Learning Delivery ensures that the appropriate pedagogical approaches are employed on how to deliver the curriculum content. And the Bureau of Learning Resources ensures the availability of learning resources to the field units. Then, a long assessment of learners' development and monitoring of the program, though the intent of homeroom guidance is to help learners develop competencies that will aid them in facing different issues and tasks, it is important to still track their level of development. So, hindi pwedeng sabihin, para guidance lang ini, one hour lang ini. So, it is very important that you will track the development development, the level of development of the learner. Homeroom guidance implementers must always keep in mind that the program shall capacitate learners towards success. Hence, compared to the formal learning areas that are being measured following the DO number 8, series of 2015, on the uh, Homeroom guidance shall utilize learners' development assessment tool. Annex 5, which shall be presented later, and you are, I know that you're also familiar of this, guided by the verbal description. Okay, so what are these verbal descriptions to be uh, Ma'am, excuse me, next po, ma'am. What are these verbal descriptions? na dapat makita sa kanilang assessment tool. Ito po, the notions to observe, the improvement, developing, sufficiently developed, and developed, and commendable. Uh, we can say NO, notions to observe, if the learner did not submit outputs as has not or has not shown any of the target competency in a particular quarter. And NI, if the learner accomplished and uh, submitted 30% of the output in a particular quarter or has not acquired and the target competencies. And developing siya kapag ang learner nag-accomplish and submitted 60% of the outputs in a particular quarter or has acquired some of the target competencies. And SD siya kapag ang learner accomplished and submitted 90% of the output in a particular quarter or has acquired the target competency and developed and commendable ang learner if na-accomplish and nag-submit 100% of the output in a particular quarter and has acquired the target competency and showed commendable application in real life situation ma po. Paano naman namin malalaman ang real life situations ngayon na nasa pandemic? Pwede naman kayo magtanong. Pwede naman kayo mag ano ng mga question craft ng question sa mga learner and ask them through via uh or interview via this one virtual and ask also the parents about the, the behavior or the development of the learner. And learners' development shall be assessed through their portfolio and performance task. Conduct of homeroom guidance is mandatory but this is not part of the academic rating. Grades are just descriptive. Needs improvement description shall not be treated as failed but shall indicate the need for intervention from school and home. In the event that the learner remains at the needs improvement at the end of each quarter, the advisor, guidance counselor, and parents need to work together to provide intervention. And disciplinary cases of learners must not affect their homeroom guidance grades. 
Okay, so hindi pwedeng sabihin, hindi pwedeng mag-grade 2, hindi pwedeng mag-grade 5, hindi pwedeng mag-grade 7 ang bata dahil NI ang kanyang homeroom guidance rating. Hindi po yun. It will not affect the academic rating of the bata. So walang failing marks here po. Ano? Okay, so next po. Okay, ito po ang ref should reflect in the forms 9 and 10. N O N I D and S D and D the details of the learner's development assessment results shall be attached to the said forms to SF form nine and SF ten. There is no need to put equivalent ratings or computation for each description. And regarding monitoring and evaluation. Uh, success and sustainability of the program will only be ensured if there is a systematic adequate monitoring and evaluation. Monitoring and evaluation shall be done from September 21 to 2022 or as is scheduled by the department. Reports on the results of the monitoring and evaluation shall be submitted at the end of school year 2021-2022. Kaya, uh, Documents are very important. Kaya para hindi kayo mahirapan, kabaga sabi, nagkapakapa ngaya, tap school year na, paano ngaya wara akong report. So, pag start po ninyo ng implementation, dapat meron na po kayong mga documents. Just like how you prepare your OPCRF or IPCRF na meron na kayong nakala na mga MOVs. Okay. So, uh, Saan na po? The following are the offices and units directly involved in the implementation and monitoring of this program. Sino po itong mga offices? Uh, sa school level, the school head leads the monitoring in coordination with the guidance counselor or the designate using the homeroom guidance school observation tool. So you are provided, nasa policy yan, nasa, nasa DepEd memo po ang mga tools. And if you present ito, Amaya, and I know that you're also familiar with this because this again, second time natin. Pero, see to it na meron na tayong mga reports this time, religiously implement na po ito. Okay? The education sa pagpapakatao supervisor under the CID in coordination with the guidance counselor or designate in the division office it's the monitoring using also the homeroom guidance division monitoring and evaluation tool provided in the policy nasa annex 3 division monitoring results shall be submitted to the regional office regional esp and dito naman po sa amin uh dsp ako yun under the clmd in coordination with the essd with the help of mom test uh, for guidance and counseling leads the monitoring in the regional level, focusing on the entire implementation of the homeroom guidance. So they shall submit the homeroom guidance re regional monitoring and evaluation tool to the Bureau of Curriculum Development on or before July 12. Again, sasabi, wala po akong isusubmit sa CO if wala pong proper implementation sa field at walang sinubmit na report sa atin. But thankful po ako because maganda po ang naging report natin sa first implementation though not all schools were able to implement religiously pa on the first implementation kasi mga windang pa ka ito not only here in our region uh, lahat naman po ganun ang naging result that's why ginawa po ito ngayon at pinapagawa sa amin itong uniformity of the implementation okay so, in the national level, the Bureau of Curriculum Development leads the overall monitoring and evaluation of the homeroom guidance. The Bureau representative shall consolidate the homeroom guidance, regional monitoring and evaluation reports, and coordinate the results to other bureaus of the central office that, we, that which may serve as reference for future enhancement of the program and related policies. Actually, yung last year na report na ginamit, um, sa sa pag kaya nagkaroon tayo ng revised guidelines or policy kaya kaya maganda na meron po tayong report okay para ma-enhance ang program
And that's this implementation of the homeroom guidance uh, program shall take effect in school year 2021-2022 and succeeding years immediately upon the website. Implementation of the revised because this is the second. Nung una, original, and ito na ngayon ang revised guidelines which I just uh, shared to you ngayon pa lang sa amin. Um, okay. So, sana po i-implement natin ito religiously and uh, maging maging magian magaan. do sabi ni Ma'am Tess kanina, hindi natin po ito ititreat na mapabigat additional load. Pero, kailangan po na kasi ng mga bata ito. In, especially in this time of pandemic. So, that's all for the updates and happy implementation for of the homeroom guidance program for this school year. Thank you, Ma'am Tess. So, Let's now go to the open forum. So kung kayo po ay may mga tanong, ayan, pwede po tayong mag-chat sa ating comment section. So you um we will be able to entertain. So nandiyan po si Ma'am Sheila and Ma'am Maritas Basilia to um, answer your questions. Ah, yes po, Ma'am Jocelyn Saison. Good afternoon. Yes, ma'am, good afternoon. Please, po. our room guidance is equivalent to one load. Uh, will it be okay if we bibigay natin siya sa non-advisor? I mean, a subject teacher of uh, that uh, specific uh, class. Okay. Who would want to answer, ma'am, Tess? Ma'am, Hi, ma'am. Uh -huh. Hindi po. Ma it is stated in the policy, ma'am, that it is the class advisor who will handle the homeroom guidance. Okay, it is the class Thank advisor. The class advisor po. Because they are the one in contact with the students, right, ma'am? Yeah, mas kilala nila. Apo. Ang mga bata. Okay. Nasa policy po. Okay. Thank you, ma'am Sheila. Okay na po, ma'am Josie. Ma'am Saison. Yes po, answer na question po. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, so sino pa po ang gusto ng panong? For Ray Bueno. Uh, thank, yes. thank you, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon. Yes po. I just want to clarify po, uh, of course, the class advisor will serve as the uh, homeroom guidance teacher. Kasi unang-una siya naman talagang may contact sa mga bata. So, no need na po siguro gumawa pa ng mga grade level uh, guidance coordinator coming from the teachers kasi ang alam ko merong hinihingi po na grade level uh, uh, guidance coordinator sa bawat classroom sabi ko noon na kasi kung meron naman guidance counselor and of course meron tayong class advisors redundant tata ang trabaho kung gadagdagan pa natin ng uh, mga coordinators kasi nagpa-submit daw po kasi o yun lang paki-clarify ko muna Kung need pang uh, magkaroon ng uh, grade level guidance coordinator. Okay. Ang pangalawa pong tanong, tuloy-tuloy ko na po kong para isahan na lang. Ah, sige po sir. Uh, regarding po sa printing of the uh, homeroom guidance modules. Kasi okay. this time in uh, RNPVS, our school, uh, medyo punong-puno talaga ang mga teachers. Eh. Uh, lalo itong mga advisors and subject teachers. Kasi meron pa silang ginagawang USN, LDM, I mean yung learning packets. So meaning, uh, talagang napupuno sila. Bali yung uh, ibinibigay na additional task na magprint pa rin ng uh, guidance uh, modules, medyo nahihirapan ng humabol. So kaya, ang tanong ko lang, meron po bang uh, assistance uh, coming from the uh, guidance counselors on how to help our teachers in uh, reproducing our guidance modules? And aside from that po, ma'am, third question, who will uh, check the homeroom guidance modules and who will give interventions uh, after the uh, after checking the homeroom guidance modules? Kasi yun ang mga tanong mga teachers, kasi sa kanila lahat eh. So pag-check, pag-consolidate, o paano pagbibigay ng interventions, yun po ang hinahanap ko pa kung paano. So para meron din po kaming guide at uh, malinawan din yung mga concerns ng teachers. Yun lang muna po. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you, Sir Ray. So, si Sir Ray po ay ang ating principal sa Art and PBS. Okay, yes. so, oo. Regarding so, po, Sir. So, ang question niya po, okay, ma'am, ma ay about sa guidance, um, grade level guidance coordinator, is there a need to have this? Then, second will be the printing of modules of the homeroom guidance. And the third is the intervention. So, kung sino po ba ang mag magbibigay ng mga interventions na ito or magpa-plan. Okay. Yes, number, one po, uh, yes. number one, regarding the grade level designation of a guidance counselor, discretion po ng school. But in the policy, it's only one school guidance designate. It's only one. Kaya kung meron man mga na-designate sa school na ilan grade level yan na guidance counselor, this, ano po yan, discretion po yan ng school. Okay. Number two, ano po ito ma'am? Yung number two? About daw po ma'am sa printing. Will ah, the okay. class advisor will do the printing? Or what assistance can the guidance counselors or designates um, give? To it's not only the, the class advisor. Nakalagay po ito sa roles and responsibility of the school. The school head. Kasi parehas po ng, ng mga regular regular learning areas, ganun din po. But the homeroom guidance or the guidance counselor could give technical assistance. Kaya po ba nakalagay dito na it's always in coordination with, di ba, ang homeroom guidance uh, uh, designate and the guidance counselors we are there to, to give technical assistance po. And doon po sa checking ng mga activities ng bata, it is also the class advisor. Kasi siya po, one teaching load, it's only once a week. It's only once a week. But siguro, depende sa pag-uusap nila ng guidance na uh, designate ng school. Kaya nga sabi ko, they have to be open sa communication. Open ang communication nila. Coordination is very important. Mm -hmm friendliness. <laughs> Ma'am Tess, ano po ang masasabi? Opo, I lost my network a while ago. So, do, may I add also, Ma'am Nerisa? Okay, the yes, first po. question is, sir, regarding sa grade level guidance coordinator, tama po si Ma'am Shi, it's the discretion of ano the teachers and the principal. And another, sabi nga, homeroom guidance for program is just part of the information service. Ano? So, ano, uh, kumbaga, uh, it depends sa panda principal. Pero, uh, in our case, I have strong partnership with the ESP, ESP teacher. Sila po ang nagsisilbing guidance, ano, coordinator in each grade level. In fact, before, may one day kami nakamustahan with ESP teachers para alam yan what's going on in every grade level. Since, they have the direct contact. Si guidance counselor kasi walang direct contact sa students. Kung hindi uh, bigyan ng ano referral, hindi i-refer ang bata, wala naman tayong ano client. So what I did is to have close partnership with ESP department. And very good po yung ano yung tandem ni ASP and guidance. And besides, may mga other tasks din kasi si guidance counselor. And we all know na guidance designate, sabi ko nga kanina, is performing Herculean task. Aside from being teacher, nagpe-perform pa siya as ano, guidance counselor. And it's very hard talaga then for them to do that. So we need to help one another. Then sa printing of modules, Again, doon very clear sa memo. Ano, Ma'am Shi, na sa principal, doon po oh, sa school. school uh -oh, the school shall provide. Dapat may, nakalagay po sa AIP ng mga school heads ang reproduction of the homeroom guidance program. Mm -hmm. And sa intervention, advisor po. Very clear din sa memorandum na the advisor will be the one who will give the ano the homeroom guidance program. So sila ang mag-check and ano uh, kung mapapansin natin this is very good also to know the students well. This time in this time of pandemic, we don't have face to face encounter with them but through the activities in the homeroom guidance program somehow uh, we we could ano we could uh, know our students. So 
advisor ang gagawa po <laughs> based sa memorandum. Thank you po. Okay, thank you Ma'am Tess and Ma'am Sheila. Ayan. So, may tanong pa po ba tayo? Actually kasi di ba Ma'am Tess, um, if I can remember it right, meron tayong ibibigay doon sa sa ating mga class advisors, right? Na form. And Apo. yun ang rate nila, di ba? And from that rating, doon sa mga descriptive rating na yun, um, doon sila kukuha ng magiging ano, ng mga um, ano ba yun, mga competencies na kailangan ng intervention. Alin po yun, ma'am, na form? Yung, uh, meron tayong guidance, yung annexes na i-discuss na discuss na po ba? Mag-discuss siya to si Ma'am Tess, mag-discuss ba? Oh, oh, po. Mag yun, may mga annexes po. Part po, yun. Mamaya i-discuss si Gira. Ah, po. Okay, so that will be Thank discussed you. by Ma'am Tere. Okay, yes, sir, Ray? Thank you po. Thank you for the answers kasi mm -hmm. na-clarified clarified po yung ano natin. Kumbaga, may mga teachers kasi nagtatanong. So, Opo. dapat po rin ma-disseminate sa kanila. Kasi, mm -hmm. lang kasi, pag-implement natin ng guidance, uh, homeroom guidance during the ano pandemic, parang di talaga tayo na-orient masyado. Mm -hmm. Kaya, even the principals, I, I do not know sa iba kung talagang oriented sila. Pero kasi kumbaga, uh, yung mga teachers, di ko rin sila talaga na-orient. Sa totoo lang, Uh, walang okay. orientation na ginawa about the role of the teachers, of the advisors. Okay. Kaya minsan, nagtatanong din sila eh. Bakit oh. sa amin? Bakit sa amin? That's so, true, Sir Ray. Oh, this, That's uh, true. Opo. Kaya ito pong not anong ito. Po sa, oh, not po. only po sa atin, sa inyo. Throughout the Philippines. Yes. Po, oh, yun yun po ang gandaan ng orientation na ito. Ang pasiguro ko po mo niyan, sa Tuya, sa Region 5, ang pasiguro ko is to have this orientation okay. by division. Kaya mas kipahirap We have to be, di, po, hindi namin re-record ni Ma'am Tess talagang, we are with you throughout. <laughs> we're very, we're very thankful. Hindi naman maiwasan na may mga queries sa about ROP. implementation ng homebrew guidance. Kaya Opo. tama po itong na-clarify tayo kasi is malinaw naman. Pag meeting ko sa mga teachers, uh, ma-disseminate yeah. ko ang information. Kung, kasi kung hindi nila nakuha lahat ng information at least dito, meron ako maibibigay pag meeting ko bukas ng gabi. Apo. Sa RO5, we should be very thankful to Ma'am Shi. Talagang, it's very hard to ano to implement this, this to 13 SDOs ata. Pero talagang, talagang andyan, very hard working sa Ma'am Shi. Just para to para make para it para sure, para. just to make it sure na talagang uniform ma-implement ang homeroom guidance program. So very commendable yung ginawa, yung leadership ni Ma'am Shi. Okay, so thank you, ma'am. Kaya yung mga walang dito, oh, 67 na lang po tayo. <laughs> let's, listen. <laughs> let's listen na siguro sa mga annexes, sa forms. Oo, oh, okay. sa annexes. Oh, okay. So, thank you very much, ma'am Sheila and ma'am Tess. And oh, thank oh, you oh. also for the questions raised here. Ayan. So, 